Welcome to SEL's Fight Scene Show. I'm here with the owner of Sparta Combat League, Jeff Cisneros. Jeff, this has been a really big year for Sparta. Uh, you did your first show in Vegas. We did the first King of Sparta tournament, the first Queen of Sparta tournament. Take me through some of the highlights of this year. Yeah, it's been exciting, Bailey. You know, the, we talked about it before. The King and Queen of Sparta tournament is actually an idea that started three years ago, and it took me three years to convince the uh, State Boxing Commission here to let it happen. And um, I thought it was perfect to debut it on Pepsi Center. Um, and so that's, that was the final push with the commission is like, I need something spectacular to be able to pull off Pepsi Center. Um, you know, let's do it. And so that went awesome. You know, it was an incredible summer. We went from doing Pepsi Center um, and debuting in Las Vegas, which was awesome. And then we came back and had the Queen of Sparta tournament where not only did you uh, commentate a little bit, but you got in there and you went Spartan on somebody and beat them up and then came back and finished your interviews, you know. So it's been a good year so far. Yeah, so um, with these tournaments, there's boxing in the first round, kickboxing in the second round, MMA is the third round. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's going to be some injuries throughout the tournament. Has that been an issue, or how have you guys been able to, you know, get through all three rounds, three fights, one night? Yeah, well, you know, I think the big difference is, is the key in the way that this tournament is is formatted. You hear a lot of fans complain that, you know, they hate to see somebody get wrestled to death in an MMA fight. Um, and we've done eight-man MMA tournaments before, and we've seen a lot of injuries, broken hands, cuts, whatnot. So when we are putting this together, the strategy behind it is you don't really see a lot of cuts in the first four rounds of boxing. It usually happens a little bit later. So if we go boxing first, then kickboxing and take out the elbows, um, we have a higher success rate of getting to that final without anybody being cut. So in the first two um, you know, rounds of this tournament, both King of Sparta and Queen of Sparta, we've had no significant injuries and nobody's been cut. Yeah, that's great. So far, it's been so good. Tournaments have run smoothly. We've got the Queen of Sparta here tonight, who we'll talk to later. We have the King of Sparta, LT Nelson, um, some, some big names in Colorado. Everybody wants to fight on these tournaments. What do you yeah. see moving forward? More tournaments? Yeah, we're definitely going to expand into more tournaments. And, um, you know, one of the things is LT Nelson, ironically, I told him he was a big motivation for this tournament of being born in the first place because his striking is so incredible. His MMA record is that really deceptive. You know, it was 7-7 seven and seven at the time. So people think he's a 500 fighter, but if you go back and look at all his matches, he dominated those fights on his feet and he got wrestled down and submitted and it just didn't go in his favor that way. So I was thinking of fighters that like LT Nelson that are very, very exciting that the fans like to watch. And, and uh, when we were putting it together, you know, I wasn't surprised at all to see LT run through the tournament and, you know, get into the final and win. I was really happy for him. So um, we have started to pick up a lot of major steam, you know, Justin Gaethje, the UFC lightweight star had talked uh, about the tournament with Ariel Hawani on the ESPN show and it, it's getting some buzz and some natural you know some big traction we're doing the Bantamweight tournament for men in January and already in just the last week and a half we received 49 uh, fighter applications for it from all over the country so it's it's getting some steam and I think it's gonna be something that just continues to get bigger and bigger yeah so then next up uh, on Friday November 9th we've got uh, another fight card tell me a little bit about what we've got to expect on that card yeah so the SEL fight night was kind of birthed as like our own farming system. It gives the younger talent a chance to really showcase, uh, you know, their skills. Um, because sometimes they get lost in the big cards like October 13th and Pepsi Center because they fight so early before the crowd gets there. Um, so we got two young stars we're really high on. You know, we got Josh Cordova, who currently is a two-division champion in the amateurs for us at 78 and 85, and he's going for his third belt at 170. Um, but he's fighting another, you know, a 20-year-old rising prospect, Koa Rodriguez, who has high-level wrestling from Wyoming, and um, it, it's gonna it's gonna be exciting as well. Several undercard fights that uh, you know those younger fighters, these fight night cards have been our our favorite as far as action because they're putting it on the line trying to get up to those Pepsi Center cards and Budweiser Event Center and things like that. Yeah, I've been to quite a few of those. Uh, it's kind of unexpected, but you do get some really good fights on those cards. Um, why don't you go ahead and tell people how they can get tickets to that? Yeah, so uh, what you want to do is visit SpartaCombatLeague.com and follow us on Instagram and Facebook uh, for the links on it. Tickets are just $30 and we promise a, a good night of action. And if you're a veteran, we give away 300 free tickets to this event on VetTix.com as well. So. Nice. All right, well next up we're going to have Catherine Paprocki, the first ever Queen of Sparta.
Okay, we're back. We know we've got Catherine Paff, Rocky here with us, the first ever 115 pound Queen of Sparta. Catherine, you made history as the first Queen of Sparta. How did it feel? It felt great. <laughs> did that, what did that mean to you, being the very first one? You know, this is a historic title for you. Yeah, um, it was cool, especially because it was the, my pro debut, so I think that was a cool way to come out and be like, here I am. Yeah, yeah, for those of you that don't know, uh, the Queen of Sparta tournament with Ka was Catherine's pro debut. She had a boxing fight, a kickboxing fight, and an MMA fight all in one night. She won all three to win the title, won $10,000. Um, you looked so good. I was very impressed with how comfortable you looked, especially with it being your pro debut. A lot of fighters experience nerves, but you looked so comfortable in there. You were light on your feet. How did you prepare mentally for it? Um, a lot of crying and being yelled at <laughs> by my coach. No, um, I love to fight um, and I've learned to just kind of enjoy every single day. And so um, training all day long, it being hard, it being good, I just kind of own up to all of it. And yeah, in, in my on. fight prep, I always do better when I can just take it one day at a time, yes. one breath at a time, because- One training session exactly. at a time. Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me about some of the hard training sessions you had. Um, you know, we did a mock tournament, um, which was my head coach's plan. And um, I think that that was huge for me. I think knowing that I could make it through a boxing fight, I could go back and I could eat and I could sleep. Um, I'd kind of been through it. So it wasn't like this brand new concept to me when it was actually happening. Yeah. Unfolding. Yeah. Going into the tournament, you had an opponent, it dropped out. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like, you didn't know what to expect it was at that a coin point. coin toss. Yes. Yes. Yes, it was very up in the air. Yeah. No one knew who you're gonna fight. Yeah. Did that mess with your head at all going no, in? No, our whole theme of the whole night was, it, it, it didn't matter who was in front of me. I had something to do that day. I had a goal and uh, it didn't matter who was in front of me. Yeah. I was gonna do what I was there to do so so in your training you are a mom you're a fighter you're a business owner yeah. how do you do it all how do you fit it in because that's a lot yeah 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 um I think it's balance when I'm on the mat I'm truly on the mat and I'm training and I'm there and then when I'm off the mat I'm a mom and I get to be mommy and yell at my children and <laughs> play with them and yeah just kind of yeah. I got to meet your kids during the fights when I was interviewing you. So they were so happy for you. Yeah. And they were talking about how they loved seeing you in there, but it was a little scary. A little how do your stressful kids deal for them. With seeing their mom in the cage. You know what? Um, they're there for all of my training too. They see I'm there early in the morning, I'm there late at night, and so I think it's kind of the same for them. Like they're just excited for me to to truly get to go do what I love to do. And there's been so much going up to that time that they're just happy for me that I'm. And they love like, will everybody see me? Like, <laughs> am I on camera? <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Yeah. So they're in the gym with you. Do they train as well? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I bet they think it's pretty cool to see they're, you as their role yes. model. Yeah. 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 So as a female in this sport, um, it, it's been growing so growing. much in the past few years. Fast. Yes. yes. Very yeah. fast. Yeah. Who's been your role model as a female? Um, you know what? Um, Shannon Sin, actually, uh, she was one of the first pro fighters that I had ever met, and I trained with her a long time ago, and I had actually um, traveled with them um, to one of her fights um, in Kansas City. And so um, it's cool, because at the time, I was like, wow, I'm like, if I could just be like her someday. And um, I just feel, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm just starting to kind of find a path on my own too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've come a long way in a short amount of time. Small amount. Like I said. Yeah. Uh, you made your pro debut. Yes. Three fights in one night. Yeah. Where do you see yourself going from here? I'm fighting for Invicta in two weeks. Um, and I just want to fight people. I know that sounds like <laughs> I just want to fight everybody. Like I don't, I don't care who they put in front of me. I'm just enjoying it. Yeah. Every single day. You seem to have found your calling. Yes. Like I said, you seem so comfortable it. in there. Yeah. Um, it's been really great. Back to the Queen of Sparta tournament. Absolutely. Let's go over it. What was your favorite part of the night? Obviously winning, but other than that, what was some favorite moments? Some favorite moments. Um, 
fighting Haga was cool. Um, she kicked me so much. <laughs> and my leg was like purple and I was like, man. Um, I wanted to fight Diana in the finals. That was my that was my dream fight um, for it to happen. And so um, when they announced her name and we knew that she was going on, I think I was like, like cool, like yeah. here we go. Yeah, she's a very experienced vet. Very experienced. And you're not. No. So was that intimidating at all? It wasn't intimidating, but it was interesting. Um, I kind of had to change up the way that I fight. I'm very high paced, I'm high volume. And in that first round, she cracked me. And I was like, oh, like maybe <laughs> I can't just come barreling in. Um, and to just feel her calmness and her experience was um, was cool. Yeah. yeah. At one point, you were in that very deep arm bar. <laughs> how, did that, how did that feel? Those. What was going on in your head at that moment? Um, I'm a calm fighter. I think that in bad spots, I, I just am like, I can get through this. I wasn't, it was deep, but my elbow was never in the right spot. So I'm, I'm pretty strong for my size. Yes, so um, I was able to kind of curl my arm and hold it until I could kind of flow my hips around. Um, and I was just thinking like, man, if I tap to this, I'm gonna do so many burpees. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go back to my gym and do burpees. So yeah, no burpees. I'm just gonna get out of it. Perfect. Yeah. So what did you learn? A lot of experience. A lot of yeah. A lot of new things for yeah. you that night. What's some, what's some things you took away from it? Um. Cardio is king, yeah. right? When you're oh, in yes. that third round and you're fresh and the other person's tired, um, it helps. Um, I learned a lot about me and who I am. Um, I'm tough and I can get through a lot. And I think like now, I'm like, I only have to fight one person now. Like, right. <laughs> this is great. So everything's easy just, from here on. It was the perfect pro debut for me. I think for me personally, just because I've now been through three different fights. I've been through this whole like, emotional up and down and um yeah it's just i will net like it's a night that like i will always hold on to as just being so like special yeah well we're very proud to have you thank as you part so of sparta much. combat thank thanks you so for much. coming here yeah. tonight thank you so much next up we're going to talk to shannon sin We are Blue Core Shooting Center, Denver's premier shooting range. Customers can enjoy a clean and safe range along with Denver's only 100-yard indoor rifle range. Come train in a friendly environment with our highly experienced staff and build the confidence you need for responsible gun ownership. We offer a wide variety of rentals and exclusive benefits to our members who enjoy online reservations at a low monthly rate. Come join us at Blue Core Shooting Center, where we are redefining the firearms experience. Next, we're here with Shannon Sin, who is the number one seed for the 125 pound Queen of Sparta tournament on December 1st. Hi, I'm Reed Pelliger, and I'm here with SCL Fight Scene. I'm sitting down with Shannon Sin, a good friend of mine and a great fighter in the Colorado scene. How are you doing today, Shannon? I'm doing well, feeling good, I'm excited. Excellent. So you're a well-known fighter in the Colorado fight scene. You've actually fought for Sparta uh, about nine times now. What's your experience been like with SCL? Um, my experience with the X SCL has always been great. Um, that's why I keep coming back. Um, Jeff, Becca, the entire team have always treated us really well. Um, the shows are great. Um, and, you know, I've had a lot of teammates fight for them also. So uh, we'll continue to fight. As a woman fighter, do you feel that there are different expectations on you guys from male fighters? Um, you know, I haven't really felt anything like that. I know that I've heard a lot of women say that they have. Um, I haven't felt that way. Um, I know everybody, when they see women uh, uh, fight on the card, they're expecting a, a good fight. And so, you know, I just always try to live up to that expectation. 
How do you think the Queen of Sparta tournament might help bring more attention to female fighters? Um, the Queen of Sparta tournament is something special, you know. There's three different styles of fights in one night. You got boxing, kickboxing, and MMA. So you can't just be a one-trick pony to get through. You know, if you want to win the tournament, you got to be well-grounded yourself. So um, I think that brings a lot of attention. What do you think the attention's been like for the Queen of Sparta? It seems to be that we've uh, seen a lot of matchups that have, uh, you know, otherwise not been able to happen. But because of the tournament, people get really excited, um, and we seem to be able to attract more bigger fights. So, what do you think about that? You know, I think it's, it's cool. Everybody wants to be a part of this tournament now. Um, I think uh, LT set the tone when he came out and, and dominated his tournament. Um, you had Catherine come through, the first women's um, Queen of Sparta. She she was an underdog on paper in the tournament and she came through and won that one so um you know people are excited for this and yeah we're seeing everybody you know, sign up and put their names in so i've had the pleasure of training with you uh you work insanely hard you're a very durable fighter um what do you attribute some of that training success to that kind of work ethic you know how do you wake up every day and continue to have that drive um you know i, I love to train i love to work out um I've been an athlete all my life, so I enjoy that. I enjoy challenging myself. Um, even on the drive up here, I see a hill, and I thought, well, I'd come back up here and run that thing. So the I, hills here are pretty big, though. I know, <laughs> and I looked it up, and it was like 8,000 uh, 8, feet you know, elevation. So um, I look for those kind of challenges, um, and I, I just love to train. So. So are you going to ramp up your training because the Queen of Sparta tournament is going to be three different fight styles, three potential fights in the same exact night. Are you ramping up what you're doing for this camp? Um, I feel like, you know, I, I always train hard. Every fight camp I train hard. Um, but, you know, there's a potential of fighting, you know, three fights in one night. That's a lot of rounds. So um, we are doing a lot more rounds, um, getting a lot more sparring um, and making sure, you know, mentally I'm, I'm always in shape physically uh, just making sure mentally i know um, i'm ready for this and i can get through as many as i need to so i know that you've brought in ex-ufc fighter luke cadillo to help with your training camp how has his, his impact been felt already uh, he's amazing um, that guy's a, a great coach um, he has a way of breaking things down um, He's good at what he does, he knows a lot of stuff, and he's not changing what I do, he's um, adding to it, um, giving me a lot more tools, um, adjusting some things, cleaning some things up, but um, it's been great. I've been working with him, you know, short time now uh, for this camp, but seeing huge improvements even today, inspiring, like little tricks came out, and you know, it feels good. So you were sparring earlier today? Yes. And you're here, that's awesome. Here we are. So, our last victor, Queen of Sparta, uh, she owns a gym, so she's in a gym all the time. You're in the same boat. Do you feel like that gives you an extra advantage because you're in it all the time? Or do you feel that sometimes it kind of can mentally, you know, kind of wear on you because you're just, you're always there and it's not as exciting? Um, I think it's great. Um, I don't have an excuse. Um, yeah, I'm there. I'm there to, if there's nothing going on. If I don't have other clients, I'm not teaching a class um, or helping someone else, then I have no excuse. I need to be training, doing something, working on some footwork. Maybe, you know, every time I walk by a bag now, I throw a combo or, or do a little bit of footwork or something. But, you know, I think it helps a lot. And, you know, it's motivating too. I have a ton, we have a ton of members at the gym, a um, little bit over 300 people um, that are members at Grinders. And, you know, watching them just at different levels, they're not fighters, not everyone's a fighter, um, but watching them accomplish things um, is so motivating for me. It, I think it adds to my training a ton. Like it, it keeps me motivated. Well, and having that many people look up to you too, I'm sure helps carry that into the gym it's a huge or into family. the cage. Yeah, it's a huge family there. So. so you've actually fought a few of the fighters that are on this card. Um, so you've already fought uh, Murawski, uh, Denny and Dean. What's, what were some of those fights like? Do you want to talk about some of those or, you know, maybe some moments from those fights or how it's kind of, you know, shaped your career and then also you know, how does that change your preparation for the fight and potentially fighting them again? Yeah, um, Denny, I fought, um, she was my last amateur fight. I uh, defended my belt against her. Um, you know, it's been a while since I fought her, but it was a good fight. It was fun, it was very entertaining. Um, Dean, I fought a couple years ago. Um, at that moment, I had um, made some changes in my in game and felt good in that fight, but I feel like I have improved so much even since then. So, you know, that I feel good against her in this tournament. And with Sherry Murawski, um, that's a fight I've wanted back. So here's a chance that maybe I can get that fight back. I felt like, uh, you know, I was doing really well in that fight. Hands were good. And I just slipped up, made a mistake, you know, in the second or third round, whatever it was. And um, 
got caught. So that, that's the way the fights go. But I've been wanting that fight back for a while. So here's a possible chance. Well, and that's one of the cool things about the sport is that, you know, one moment can change a fight. And then at the same time, you also have chances for redemption. You know, you have the chance to fight that opponent again and show everybody how much you've changed over time. You have the potential of possibly fighting an, an old student of yours. Do you think that that plays into an advantage at all? Or how do you feel that could go? Well, obviously, I'm very uh, familiar with her as I am, uh, you know, past opponents. Um, I think, you know, that does, there are some advantages to that. Um, as well as, you know, my very first uh, opponent in this tournament, in the boxing match, um, I've coached two students against her also. So I feel like this tournament suits me very well. Um, I'm familiar with the girls in it. There are a couple um, outsiders in there too, but, but it doesn't matter, you know, in the end, Whoever it is, three of the girls, pick them out. Um, I'm, I'm willing to fight them all and excited to do so. So if you win the Queen of Sparta, when? how do you celebrate? When I win the Queen of Sparta, um, that's just before Christmas. So I plan on spoiling my nieces and nephews, um, giving them a fun Christmas, and then, God, hopefully finding some time to take a little vacation with uh, Albert, maybe. Well, thank you for sitting in with me and Shannon Sin, and we're going to be back to you with uh, Brent, Bailey, and Jeff. Hey, SEL Fight fans, this is Brent Bradley back here with Jeff Cisneros and Bailey Winters back for SEL Fight Scene. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, December 1st card and the Queen of Sparta tournament in particular. Jeff, it's a pretty crazy card. We've got a ton of great female 125 fighters. We've got Shannon Sin on the card, who's fought for us you know, multiple times, and all the way through a girl that's fought on the Ultimate Fighter. Kind of give us a feel of what this card is going to be like. Like an overview of it. You know, it's um, the tournament has caught fire like we've talked about. It's very exciting for everybody involved in it uh, because it's built for the fans. You know, it's it's boxing, kickboxing, MMA all in one night. Um, and so far, what we've seen in the first two rounds of the tournaments, it's been nothing but pure excitement. Uh, but let's not forget the undefeated, undisputed featherweight champion, Justin J. Train Gonzalez is back and he's fighting a very tough opponent in Drew Brook Brookenshire, who was our featherweight champion up in Washington and has some huge fights on his resume as well. So looking at the 125 tournament, uh, tell us a little bit about those first round matchups, kind of how you designed those, how you picked the seating, and then kind of what your predictions are for those first two fights. Well, you know, one of the things with the seating, and we talked about it, is people are like, oh, I'm 5-0 and as an MMA fighter. You know, I should be seated higher. But that's not what we did. Me, you know, myself, Will Hammond, and a few other people on the team, we go at it and we look at your overall skill set. What have we seen? What have I seen from you from boxing? What have I seen you from kickboxing? What have I seen on the MMA side? And we build the bracket based on that. And, and so far, I think that we've done a pretty good job of building exciting matchups, you know. Number one is uh, Shannon Sin versus Selena Valdez. 
Selena is super aggressive. So it makes the, you know, it makes that matchup very interesting to me because she can be, she's, she's a bully in there. Um, definitely Shannon's got a lot more experience. She's a lot more technical, um, but it's hard to fight somebody that's pressuring you like that. You know, we just added Ariel Beck, Ultimate Fighter alum, um, the number two seed, and uh, she's gonna cause some problems. She's three and as a as a professional boxer as well. So it's gonna be interesting. That's what I love about the women's tournaments though. It's really a crapshoot who's gonna win and it's who can put it together the best that night. Something else I thought was really interesting. We've got a girl that's in the tournament that recently fought in the other 115 pound Queen of Sparta tournament. How do you think that's gonna play into this, you know, having the fact that she's kind of already experienced how that works? You know, I think it's a big advantage for Heather. Uh, she's not gonna have to cut as much weight, you know, at 125 pounds. You saw how tall she is at 115 pounds. She's, uh, so she's really the only girl in this tournament with the experience of multiple fights in one night on the Queen of Sparta format. So I think that uh, Heather's gonna, you know, Heather versus Ashley Dean's a very interesting fight right out the gate. Training partners, they know a lot about each other. Um, I've been telling people for a long time, Ashley's very dangerous and she's one of the few in the tournament that possesses one punch knockout power. So it's, it's gonna be interesting to see how that matchup plays out. Going off of the seating and everything like that, obviously you're the one that said it. Do you have just a gut feeling of what that championship fight's going to look like? I've only I've only um, set these tournament brackets when I know that they're successful. I'm waiting for it to actually go the other way, and then I'll blame it on Bailey or or yourself. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, I'm in the process of trying to get ready for a fight. I'll be fighting on the December first card. Yep. Uh, I've got a tie fight coming up. We've got a lot of other great fights on that card as well. You mentioned Justin J Train Gonzalez making his return to the SCL cage against a really tough opponent. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, you know, Drew Brookenshire, I mean, he's an animal. You know, for those of you fight fans that are familiar with, um, you know, that Pac Northwest out there, it's got a lot of talent. Julian Arosa is a UFC fighter. He's actually on the Denver card um, next week. Him, he's always been considered one of the top 45ers out there in the country. Well, him and Drew have fought twice. Drew got him once and he got Drew once. So that tells you the level of fighter we're dealing with with Brookenshire. Um, he won our title out there two years ago. Um, events, a very game opponent. Something that Drew brings, he has over 50 amateur kickboxing fights and he's got four professional boxing fights as well so he's he is dangerous and no doubt he's the toughest test of Justin's uh, young career so far and getting back uh, just on track for a little bit on the 125 Queen of Sparta tournament I know Bailey you've had a lot of experience in the ring you've done a lot of training and stuff like that as a female fighter you know what kind of things are you looking for in this tournament well, my background's in boxing and then I transitioned to Muay Thai um, so I love to see girls doing all of it, you know. Um, a lot of these girls have MMA experience, so that's kind of what their background is. But I like to see them getting taken out of their comfort zone, which is probably MMA, um, and being limited to boxing, because it's always interesting how those matchups are gonna go. Um, a lot of times, you could have a girl who's really good at wrestling, like Shuri, uh, who's in the tournament. Um, but we haven't seen a lot of her striking. So I'm interested to see how uh, MMA fighters transition just to striking. I do love that fact, especially about this tournament, that you can't be a one-trick pony. You've got to be able to box. Then you've got to be able to throw kicks. You've got to make it through a kickboxing fight. Having been through both of those and knowing the kind of toll that that can take, you know, what kind of advice do you have for those boxing fights and kickboxing fights to try to make it through with the least amount of damage? Because obviously, if you take four rounds of damage in a boxing fight, that can really affect you in the championship. I love what Catherine Paprocki did with uh, simulating the tournament beforehand. I think that's a great way to kind of experience it and get all the nerves out and see how the process is going to go. Um, so I think that's a great idea for the upcoming uh, Queen of Spider tournament and all the King of Spider tournaments that we're going to be doing. It's a great way to prepare, I think. Well, and then back to the rest of the card, Jeff. I know that we've got another rematch on the card that I think we're all kind of looking forward to in the Cotton matchup. Yeah, Dean Cotton versus Devon Butler, both two of the young rising stars in that featherweight division. They had originally fought in July of 2017 for the 135 pound title. Um, and so they're both moving up 10 pounds, you know, muscle maturity, they're evolving, they're becoming a lot older. Um, Dean is a warrior, as we saw in March, he fought with a broken jaw for two rounds and ended up pulling up, you know, pulling off the upset. And um, Devin, outside of, uh, you know, he's dominated everybody he's fought except for Cedric Jackson who um, we all believe is just on another level. We can't wait to see him back too. I mean, he, you know, it's five and zero, and nobody's even posed a threat to him. So it's, um, it's gonna be an exciting fight. Going off that, I, I was actually commentating on that fight when Dean had that comeback win. It was incredible. The entire fight was 
pretty one-sided until Dean just came out of nowhere and came back and took the fight. Uh, definitely an exciting matchup. Is there anything else that you're looking forward to on this card? You know, th these tournaments, they're just so exciting for me. And um, all the girls involved, you know, they're all class acts. And I'm just super excited to see um, to see the, the next you know next progression. Who's going to win the 125-pound Queen of Sparta? Who's going to join that elite crew? Um, that's what I'm most excited for. And, of course, I'm excited for, you know, the J-Train Gonzalez fight versus Drew Brookenshire um, because I think that if Justin can stop Drew, it says a lot about where he is. Justin's 7-0 right now. He's a perfect 16-0 between amateur and professional, and he's highly touted on UFC's radar. But he's got to be able to get past Drew, which is not an easy out. So I know this is obviously a huge card. We've got a tournament again. We've got a ton of other fights. Um, it's at the National Western Complex mm -hmm. on December 1st. You want to let people know kind of how they can get tickets and where they can get information on that? Yeah, so um, this one's December 1st. We're making our debut at National Western Complex. We are already completely sold out of VIP tables. Um, so uh, for the rest of the tickets, um, SpartaCombatLeague.com um, is where you can purchase those. But um, we're excited. And if you can't make it out that night, we'll have a pay-per-view feed as well. So um, you can enjoy it on pay-per-view as well. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jeff. It was a Pleasure talking to you, Bailey. It was great talking to you again, and we'll be right back. Now at Justice Narrows to talk about what we have to look forward to in the 2019 season uh, with Sparta Combat League. Jeff, I know we've got a good card coming up January 26th. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm really excited, Bailey. We're going to fire off our 10th anniversary season with the men's 135 pound king of Sparta. Um, you know, we were just talking about it earlier. We've had almost 50 fighter applications for it with some of the most elite talent from all over the world. So we're excited. Um, you know, there's a couple names in there that we hope that uh, will be in there, like Josh Huber, Hussam Hus Al-Kassari, uh, just to name a few is what, who we'd like to have in that tournament, so. When you're looking at all these applications, obviously a lot of talent, like you said, yeah. how do you choose? You know, a lot of the fighters, I'm um, just from being in the game for so long, I'm well aware of who they are. They've either come through on a roster before or, I have followed their career, seen them in, you know, maybe Bellator, or UFC, and and it didn't work out for them there, and, and so now they're back. So it's um it's a fun process, you know. Myself and Will Hammond, the new SEL matchmaker, we really like looking at these, and it, it's going to be tough. This one's going to be really, really hard, and and I think that this could be by far the most competitive tournament that we've done so far. Well, you, you mentioned a few other names. Anybody else you want to? Hint at? Uh, we'll leave it there. Okay. And, you know, we'll leave it there for right now, but we've got our eye on some uh, some candidates that I think it's going to make it um, a really special night. So These King and Queen of Sparta tournaments have been really popular. I know you're, we're looking to do more in the future. Mm -hmm. um, what do you have planned? Well, you know, in, in 2019, we're definitely going to do four more tournaments. Um, we have not yet determined the weight classes. 
Um, you know, it, it's typical women fashion right there where you think LT Nelson has stolen the show on performance of the year. And then uh, here comes Cat Pop Rocky, you know, to outdo him with uh, an even more elite performance that night. So um, probably we will see the women's 135 pound tournament. Um, and something that we've kind of talked about is uh, a big purpose of these tournaments is to create super fights and we're seeing that where we're seeing teammates friends foes um, you know the amount of the purse has made it uh, made it worth it for people to come out and and fight people that they've trained with and whatnot but what I want to do is like we seen LT Nelson win at 55 we're gonna see a 170 pound king of Sparta well, what we're gonna do in 2020 is we're gonna create a super series where we have a pound for pound tournament and we're gonna get a 55 champion and a 70 champion to fight at 165 pounds and the same thing we have 115 pound women's champion 125 let's see if we can get them to meet at 120 and and just keep these tournaments fun and fresh you yeah know? that'd be very exciting one of the other big cards you do is the army versus marines card mm -hmm. i know we have another one look to look forward to this summer tell yep. us a little bit about that one yeah well we're not going to do it in the summer we actually moved it to april 27th at budweiser event center uh the 10th anniversary and we're going to do the first ever king of sparta um military edition 125 pound males um and it, it's going to be awesome and for this we're going to invite back all the 10 years of, of um, all the beneficiaries that we've honored um, and we're going to hopefully have all the ones that are still alive back with us um, for that night so that's going to be really exciting but I'm really excited about the entire year and all the rising prospects we have you know somebody that I want to talk about right now is is Michael Stack um, you know he was undefeated amateur champion and he had his pro debut on the Queen of Sparta card I mean he blew me away. Very I mean, bloody he, fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not not much of it was his. You know, Joseph yeah. Galaviz is as tough as they come. And um, man, Michael just looked really good. Okay. And he he fought him ten pounds heavier than we're gonna see him. He wants to be a, a full blown featherweight at 145 pounds. So he's gonna be a big problem for anybody in that division. We're gonna see him a lot next year. Yeah, we could see him in a tournament potentially. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe. And then we're definitely working on heading back to Las Vegas. That was a great experience for us out there. Uh, you know, it's a fight capital of the world, so it's where you want to be. There's a lot of eyeballs out there, and uh, we're, we're super excited about it. You know, we're really thankful for a lot of the partnerships that, that we have this year. Um, Saratoga Casino, where we're shooting this from, we're going to, you know, watch the fights after, and we're going to go down and play some dice and, and probably lose all the money that I came <laughs> up here with. So maybe it's smarter on their end but it's a good time. Well, yeah, like I said, a lot of things to look forward to. Really excited to see what this next year is going to bring. Yeah. Um, and so that's about it for tonight's show. You can follow us on social media at Sparta Combat League, and you can purchase tickets for any upcoming fights at SpartaCombatLeague.com, or you can also view them on pay-per-view. I'm Bailey Winters. Thanks for watching.